How's it going everyone? It is Pangino here and in this video we're going to be covering the best AMD Radeon control panel settings for the best FPS possible, how to fine tune and set up your graphics correctly whether you're looking for performance or the best visuals possible, alongside going into some more advanced optimizations with inside of the control panel to ensure that you are getting the best performance possible in 2022. It's been a few years since my last video covering the AMD Radio control panel, there's been a ton of updates, a massive load of new features added into the driver and we're going to be covering all of that and more. As always if you do enjoy this video and are happy with your results please do leave a like and a comment down below to help out with the YouTube algorithm as it does help me out tremendously and consider subscribing to the channel if you do enjoy this style of content. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the activate windows watermark, built a new PC or just want to own windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of windows and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. We're first of all going to ensure that we are running on the latest update of the GPU drivers, but there are two very important ways to do this. You can just simply update your GPU driver through the control panel, where it will simply update the existing driver. Alternatively, if you are someone that is experiencing a lot of micro stuttering with inside of your games, constant crashes, or very low performance, it may actually be more worthwhile for you to use a program called DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller to completely remove the display driver from your PC, where you can then boot into Windows Safe Mode, install a brand new clean driver. If you wish to update your pre-existing driver, simply right click on the desktop, go to show more options, then open up the AMD Radeon software. Head up to home. On the right hand side, go to driver and software, then click the button for check for updates. And if there are, just select the download and install button, wait for this to complete, you may need to restart your PC and you're then good to go on the latest driver. We're first of all going to start off by going to the top right hand side to the main settings page. First of all, starting off with system. Scrolling down to preferred software version, you can choose to select recommended or recommended plus optional. Optional can have some performance fixes and early new features that are typically not as stable as recommended drivers, set this to your personal preference. Check for updates is recommended to have switched to automatic. Download drivers and software I would recommend disabling, otherwise new drivers could download in the background when you're playing games. Proceeding to navigate down towards the bottom. If for any reason you wish to keep this on, you can, but my recommendation for issue detection would actually be to disable this option. With that completed, we're then going to head over to the graphics panel. For the top preset options, this doesn't matter what you have selected as we're going to be customising these options anyway. If you are missing an option or two, don't panic, just simply skip that option and move on to the next option which applies to your GPU. So to start off with the settings with inside of here we're first of all met with Radeon Super Resolution or RSR. This is a fantastic new option which is available to RX 5 and 6000 series GPUs and anyone running on one of these GPUs should have this option enabled as it simply allows games to be able to utilize the AMD FSR technology anytime you set your in-game resolution lower than your monitor's native resolution. So if that option is available to you turn this on. This will flicker your screen once that's completely fine. Once that's done go ahead and select skip. For Radeon and lag we're actually going to be switching this off but I would recommend using this in some games and I'll show you how to set this up on a per game basis later on in the video. Radeon Chill is also going to be switched off. Radeon Boost is going to be switched off. Radeon Image Sharpening is a fantastic option to use if you do not have Radeon Super Resolution available to you. So if you don't see this option I would definitely recommend setting Radeon Image Sharpening to on. Unfortunately you can't use both Super Resolution and Image Sharpening at the same time and set your sharpness to anything you wish to do so. For me I liked using 20% when I use this setting. Radeon enhanced sync, you're going to want to turn this on if you're planning on using Radeon Free Sync, otherwise leave this off. Wait for vertical refresh. If you are going to be using AMD Radeon FreeSync, I would recommend setting this to off unless application specifies. If you are not planning on using FreeSync, I would switch this to always off. Heading down to the advanced tab, frame rate target control is going to be set to disabled because again, we're going to be setting this up on a per game basis later on in the video. Anti-aliasing is going to be set to use application settings. Anti-aliasing method is going to be left at multi-sampling. Morphological anti-aliasing, we're going to be switching on. For anisotropic filtering, we can leave this disabled or enabled. If you are going to enable this though, I'd recommend using 16 or 8 times. For me though, I personally leave this off. Texture filtering quality, we're going to be switching this to performance for the best performance possible. Surface format optimization is going to be switched on. Tessellation mode is going to be set to either AMD optimized or if you would like an experimental tweak, head down to override application settings, set the maximum level to 2. 
but may also come with a slight visual loss. OpenGL triple buffering off. 10-bit pixel format can be switched on if you're using a 10-bit compatible panel, but you'll need to consult your monitor information to find that out. Now you can perform a reset with Inside Fib, but before you do so, when you do perform a shader cache reset, this is going to make your games slightly stuttery the first time you play them, because when you boot into a game, you'll have to rebuild all of the shaders for them. With graphics completed, head over to display. AMD FreeSync, switch this on if you're planning on using it, otherwise turn this off. Virtual Super Resolution is going to be switched to the off position. GPU scaling may already be turned off if you're using Radeon Super Resolution or RSR in the previous step, so leave GPU scaling alone. Integer scaling is a fantastic option to enable if you play a lot of older 8-bit style titles or titles that don't scale properly or if you do a lot of emulation. For most users though, I would keep this switched off. HDMI link assurance, off. HDMI scaling, 0%. Color depth is going to be set to match your panel. If you have an 8-bit panel, go with 8. If you have a 10-bit panel, go with 10. Or if you have a 12, go with 12. For most of you watching, you're more than likely going to be using 8-bit. Pixel format, leave this alone. Display color enhancement, you can choose to try out Vivid Gaming. This won't affect performance, but will change the way that games look and colors are processed from the GPU. Experiment around with this and feel free to use it if you do like it. We're not going to be changing anything with inside of the video tab as this is personal preference. Heading over to hotkeys, we're going to select the option to turn on hotkeys and we can then change any of the hotkeys with inside of here to anything you wish to do so if you want to quickly enable them or just remember what these hotkeys are so you know how to quickly use some of the features with inside of games. This is super useful with inside of the AMD radio control panel because it allows you to turn features such as RSR, Radeon Chill, Radeon Boost or even Anti-Lag on on the fly when any game is open. We're then going to be ignoring accounts, ignoring AMD Link, ignoring Relive VR and heading over to Record and Stream. Now as always, for the best performance possible, you will always want to disable as many excess features as possible. So if you aren't ever planning on using the recording functionality built with inside of your GPU, I'd recommend turning all of these options off. But if you are someone that would like to record clips or have the best recording settings possible, if you want to be able to record your desktop, enable this setting. I would recommend turning on Show Indicator so you can always see if you're recording. Recording Profile is going to be set to Custom. Recording Resolution should be set to your in-game resolution. Recording FPS should be set to match your desired FPS. Video Bitrate for the best quality possible, set this to 100. Audio bitrate, we're also going to be maxing out at 320. Recording encoding type, we're going to be switching this from AVC to HEVC, if this is supported by your GPU. The reason we're going to be going with the high efficiency video codec is that with AMD Radeon GPUs, we are currently limited to 100 megabits per second. But if we use the high efficiency video codec, we get a lot more quality for that limited amount of bandwidth, resulting in fantastic looking content. Do bear in mind though that you will need a video editor or a playback option with inside of Windows that will support HEVC. Audio channels I'd recommend setting to stereo. Separate microphone track is recommended to have switched on. Record microphone, you can switch this on or off depending on your personal preference. Push to talk can also be set up as personal preference. For streaming settings, we're going to be ignoring these because if you are going to stream, you should use something like OBS as it's a fantastic utility and provides way more settings and customization. Moving over to performance. Inside of here, we're going to be changing the performance overlay statistics. Sampling interval with inside of here, I'd recommend setting to about 1, 1.25 or 0.75. You can then choose to turn on the metrics overlay to have a quick look at it. And that's it in the top right hand side. It gives you a basic rundown of all of the system information whilst you're playing games or just using your desktop. Then heading over to preferences. Inside of the preferences tab you're going to want to have as many of these options turned off as possible if you aren't planning on using them because more features equal more complications. Steam VR integration, if you're not using a VR headset or don't own one, turn this off. In-game overlay should always be enabled, web browser should be disabled, system tray menu disabled, advertisements off, Toast notifications off, always on top, disabled, animations and effects should also be disabled. We can then head up to the top left hand side to the gaming tab. We've currently already set up our global graphics and global display settings. We're going to be covering a few of the options which we were going to set up earlier on, such as AMD anti-lag, setting correct frame caps, and all of the other options which we were going to use on a per game basis. So I'm going to be using Overwatch for this example. Click on any game you wish to set up these settings for. We will then have pretty much all of the options available for your game, but any changes we make with inside of the game profile will only be applied when you boot this specific game. This is great because it means we can keep these features off for our PC and only turn them on for the games which will actually benefit from using them. Starting off with Radeon Super Resolution. Regardless of what game you're playing, you should have this option enabled because it only turns on if you select the options in game. For Radeon Anti-Lag, this is going to come down to how much of a GPU load there is in your current game. And this is where the AMD overlay comes in handy. If I was to press Control Shift and O whilst playing Overwatch, you can then see my GPU utilization in the top right hand side and I'm currently using 6 
96%. But if my GPU utilization was anywhere from 95, 97, or even 100% usage, that would be quite high usage. Basic rule of thumb is, if GPU utilization is at 95% or above, switch anti-lag on. Radeon Chill is a fantastic option to set the limits of your FPS to reserve GPU power draw, keeping your GPU cooler. I wouldn't recommend using AMD Radeon Chill on all games, but any games that don't require high amounts of FPS, and you have GPU overhead available, something like Elden Ring that already has a 60 FPS cap, you could switch AMD Radeon Chill on, set your minimum FPS you want to receive, and set the maximum you don't want to go above, and that's how you would set that up. For me personally though, I do not use this option. Radeon Boost is quite buggy, so I'm not going to recommend using this on any games. Radeon Image Sharpening, if you aren't planning on using Radeon Super Resolution, you should turn this on, boot into the game you're changing these settings for, then adjust the slider whilst in-game to see which setting you prefer. Enhanced Sync and Vertical Refresh we're going to be leaving alone as you set those up earlier. For Free Sync, we're going to be leaving this at AMD Optimized, or if you're not planning on using it, switch this off. Scaling Mode is going to be set to default, Integer Scaling default. Custom Color, I would recommend switching on, because you can then adjust the saturation for that individual game, and once you're done setting up these settings, you can just simply head back with inside of the gaming menu, head over to the rest of your games, boot up another game, go through all of the settings, and set completely different color settings and options for each game. And for any of you that may suffer with colorblind, you can navigate down to the color deficiency correction, switch this to enabled, and set up these sliders on a per game basis to adjust them for your personal preference. But another thing to remember, because you're running on an AMD Radeon GPU, you can simply press Alt and R in any game, and this will automatically boot up the AMD Radeon overlay, where you can adjust all of your settings whilst you're playing a game. If I zoom in at the top, you can see that my GPU utilization is about 98. This would be a fantastic game to press Alt and R on, head up to my gaming tab, select Overwatch, as this is the game in which I'm currently running on, and enabling AMD Radeon Anti-Lag with inside of this game. Enabling AMD Radeon Anti-Lag is going to give me an instant render latency improvement. In some games, this will require a quick game restart. If you're playing a game that you fancy an FPS boost on, and you do have the option for RSR or Radeon Support Resolution enabled for your game, and that's switched on but inactive, as you can see, I'm currently getting 185 to 190 frames per second. If I now jump into my in-game settings, go to Options, go to the Video or Graphics tab, find your resolution setting within side of here. For me, I'm currently running on a 4K display, so that's 3840 by 2160 default. If I set this to anything lower than my default resolution, such as 1728 here, select this option, select apply. Once that's then been applied, if we press Alt and R on our keyboard, we can then see that the upscale status is switched to active, and we're now achieving nearly 240 frames per second from changing that one setting. That's just settings available on the fly in your graphics control panel. And if you're happy with how this looks visually, you can jump back inside of the settings menu and continue to go lower and lower the in-game resolution until you find a fine balance of what you find visually acceptable and the performance in which you're getting. Navigating down to 1440p, I'm still more than happy with how this looks, it looks very sharp, we're achieving over 300 frames per second. That's a 110 FPS increase just from utilizing settings you may not even know existed inside of your AMD Radeon control panel. Navigating over to record and stream. For this, we're going to go ahead and select skip as we set up all of our settings earlier on. Lastly, we're going to be navigating over to the performance tab, which is arguably one of the most important tabs with inside of here for fixing potential issues or stuttering. First of all, starting off with the metrics tab. This is going to be your in-game overlay. To turn this on, we're going to be selecting control, shift, and O on our keyboard. With inside of here, you'll then have the options available that you may want to monitor at any time. Go into the drop down menus for these and turn any or all of these options on or off, depending on what you would like to monitor. Once that's done, navigate over to tracking. To the right of this, you'll see overlay tucked behind here. With inside of here, you can then choose to enable graphs and meters, which will change the way the overlay looks. You can also adjust the size of the overlay. You can adjust how many columns are in the overlay, where if you max this out, you can see all of the options just reported at the top of your screen, and you can also choose to turn this off. Once you've set up your in-game overlay, if you're wanting to use one, we're then going to be navigating up to tuning in the top left-hand side. Now, this isn't going to be an extensive tuning guide showing you how to get the most out of your GPU, but mainly the settings in which you should look into, enable, and try if you experience issues or would like slightly more performance. To start off with inside of here, we're going to be heading over to the right hand side to manual tuning, custom then select OK. For those of you that experience quite a lot of micro stuttering with inside of your games, a common fix for AMD Radeon GPUs is to navigate over to GPU tuning, turning this to on. We're then going to set advanced control to enabled, navigate down to our max frequency. This will more than likely be different for your GPU, that's fine. Find the second digit and we're going to remove 100 megahertz from this. So we're currently sitting at 2629, we're going to remove 100, 
and set this to 2529. A common issue with AMD Radeon GPUs is that they actually underclock themselves or don't clock themselves properly when playing DirectX 9, 10, OpenGL, or sometimes even DirectX 11 games. To fix this, you can set the minimum frequency more aggressively. And for a reserved figure, I would set this to about half the value of your maximum, and that should be a good starting point. For me though, what I like to do is I actually like to set my minimum frequency to 100 megahertz less than my new maximum. So my maximum is 2529, so I'm going to be setting this to 2420 but this is for me and my GPU and I know that this works. Voltage millivolts we're not going to be touching with inside of this video as we'll have a more extensive GPU undervolting guide coming later which you should definitely stay tuned for because it will allow you to unlock more performance, draw less power, less heat, helping your GPU last longer and perform better. Now regardless if you're using the GPU tuning changes we just made, every single person watching this video needs to navigate over to fan tuning and turn this on. We're then going to go down to advanced control, switch this to the on position because by default these are very reserved on nearly all graphics cards for noise levels. As you can see on the default graph for this GPU, we're not using 100% of the GPU fans until it's sitting at about 90 degrees. Zero RPM I'd recommend switching on, so if the GPU is idle and doesn't need the fans running, that's fine. What you'll then do is drag any of these sliders and set them as aggressively or passively as you would like to do so. Fan speed and fan noise doesn't bother me and I would prefer a cooler system than a quieter one. So I'm going to find my temperature point for 62 degrees with inside of here and I'm going to set this to about 75% of my fan speed on the left hand side. So whenever the GPU hits 62 percent with inside of games, the fans will ramp up to 75%. Halfway through this I'm going to be setting this up to 100, so for some reason the GPU climbs past 70 odd degrees, it will then be running 100% of the fan speed, navigate up to the top right hand side, select apply, you then want to save this profile, select your desktop, name the profile anything you want to do, you can just call this fan, select save, and whenever you boot into the radium control panel, go to the top right to load profile, desktop, fan, open. Now if you're still running into a performance issues, we do have a separate video covering all advanced optimizations, settings and everything you may want to change and apply with inside of the AMD Radeon control panel, but to close out this video and shed some light on some common fixes in which you can try if you are still experiencing performance issues, if your GPU currently supports resizable bar and has this feature switched on, try switching this off. If your GPU supports PCIe 4.0 and is using this, consider rebooting your PC into the BIOS, go to the PCIe settings and switch the speed from Gen 4 to Gen 3. The only time I would recommend using Gen 3 speeds is if you're running on an RX 6400 or 6500 GPU. Boot into your favourite games and try those new settings out. And there you guys have it. That is the ultimate setup guide for the AMD Radeon control panel in 2022. Consider checking out the two videos on screen now for further optimizations and to learn a little bit more about optimizing your system.